Thursday, September 27th, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Guys, a quick update on Hurricane Rosa. You can see here on the GO-16 infrared, starting to develop an eye wall. It's rapidly intensifying, so to speak. It's been a Category 1 for about 24 hours. It's now a Cat 2, expected to strengthen to a Category 3 in about 12 hours. Remain a Category 3 for an extended period of time, talking about day and a half maybe but it could strengthen to a category four it's going to be in exceptionally warm waters in this area so we'll have to wait and see category three is still a major storm it's now uh, moving a little closer to that turning point where it's going to go north northeast and right now the models are still showing a Arizona rendezvous sometime on Monday the first into Tuesday um, October 2nd so expect a lot of rain from a tropical, possibly a tropical storm, more than likely a tropical depression. And I'll show you why. As this thing makes landfall, this is Rosa after it makes landfall. This number right here is the central low pressure. And that's 988 millibars after the system makes landfall. That's still very significant. What you're looking at here is precipitation. This isn't wind or anything like that, but... That shows the central low pressure of the system. 988 after landfall is pretty significant. The black you see here near the center of rotation that extends out from the center of rotation, that's height. This storm is getting tall. When you see shades of white blended in with the dark, that's even more height. So this is becoming quite the storm. Will it remain a storm all the way to landfall? More than likely not, because it's going to encounter cooler waters but once again this thing is in anomalously warm waters all the way up to the coast so it could surprise us and make landfall as a category one maybe i don't know it's still too early to tell but those waters do make a difference in the strength of hurricanes that's why they have those sea surface temperatures and they always associate those with the strength of hurricanes because it does matter so we'll have to wait and see this is a look at the entire full disk, and you can see there's a little bit going on in the Atlantic. This storm here, someone asked if it was going to make landfall in New York on the 30th, and that would be no. It is going to move to the west, but this isn't going, going to do anything. It's just a, a big rotating structure more than anything. It doesn't even have hardly any thunderstorms in it. Some, but not much. That's going to come a little bit to the west and then go uh, rapidly to the North Atlantic but not for probably another week. It's kind of like stuck there. This is Kirk, or what's left of Kirk. It came off of the west coast of Africa as a tropical wave. It's going to encounter, and you can even see signs of the high winds in the Caribbean. So that will kind of disassemble any sort of storm structure that this has. It will not be a problem. Shouldn't be. I mean, might see some rain in the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, up through Dominica, but not much of anything as far as an organized storm. Rose is a different story. See those pinks? Those are near the top of the charts with regard to height. That's turning into a very strong storm. About to be a major storm here in the next 12 hours, according to the National Hurricane Center. They've got this thing at 970 millibars as a Category 2 right now, or this was advisory number 10 just about an hour ago. That's why I say 988 after landfall is significant. That's very strong. Right now it's 970 out in the ocean as a cat too with 105 mile an hour winds. We'll click on the National Hurricane Center advisory and you can see they've got it becoming a major hurricane today, remaining a major hurricane through Saturday. Um, a hurricane up to Sunday morning and then a tropical storm but that's subject to change. These are forecasted models that are five days out, and usually they change some. Don't know if the strength will change. I personally think it will, but we'll have to wait and see. But right now, all of the models are showing this thing headed towards Arizona. Also, guys, if you have a sincere interest in hurricanes and typhoons, tropical storms, the weather in general like I do, there's many great apps out there across the internet that can teach you a lot of great things. But you have to put in the time. You have to understand what convergence means. You have to understand what 
wind shear means and how it affects tropical storms and cyclones. You can't just look at the colors and the, the swirling vortexes and, and have a cognitive understanding of it. But there are a lot of good apps out there that can teach you great things. So don't ever let anybody that's been to college and has got a master's degree, say 20 years ago, intimidate you and think you're not qualified to, to become a storm tracker. Because if you stick at it every day and study these weather patterns on these great apps that are out there, you will become educated. I'm not saying you'll ever be a meteorologist, but maybe you didn't want to be. But if you have a desire to understand hurricanes, their personalities, how different aspects of the ocean and the atmosphere and wind affect hurricanes, you can figure it out in today's world. There are a lot of good uh, apps out there. And don't ever let anybody tell you that you're inferior and you're not capable of doing it because I assure you, you are. What I want to talk about real quick is this storm over here in Japan, this uh, Typhoon Trami. Trami, it is going to produce, if this model is accurate, which it normally is, to a certain degree, like they all are, none of them are perfect, but um, this one's normally a very good source of information. This is VentureSky.com. 50, I saw one in here that was near 60 feet. That's coastal, 49 to 50 foot waves. There's one in there that is recording 59 feet based off of central low pressure, wind speed, and all that. Right in there, 59 foot, nearly 60 foot offshore, 50 foot onshore. 50 foot waves. Unbelievable. And that's on Sunday the 30th at 2 a.m. So this storm here... Yet again, another Japan landfall. It seems like one every week. And there's a system behind this one. Let's see if I can find it on Venture Sky. It's about three days behind. There it is. 94W. It's not a named storm yet on the 30th. But if we step it ahead to, say, Tuesday, this will soon be a named storm. Yet another typhoon. You can see that one going on up to the north in the North Pacific still producing tremendous waves unbelievable storm but rosa is getting stronger as i do this video the system is becoming more organized it's developing an eye wall a strong center of rotation it's got exceptional outflows in fact let's look at the outflows real quick let's those are important they're called convergence and divergence convergence are the inflows divergence are the outflows and we'll look at it real quick here at the SSEC. Let's take a look at... That's very high, guys. That's a tall storm. That represents strength. Let's look at the inflows and outflows real quick. There's the inflow. Those are big numbers. Look at the outflows on that thing. It's divergence. The yellow lines are outflows. Light blue are inflows. That's a big, healthy storm that is not in, in uh, any type of wind shear at all. So it will continue to strengthen. And we'll look at it from the 8 km perspective. Let me take all these off. Those do mean something, though, by the way. And it's not going to, at least for now, encounter much wind shear on its way to Arizona as some sort of a tropical system. Don't know exactly what yet. But you can see it's headed right towards Arizona. Rendezvous sometime on Monday possibly into Tuesday, maybe through Tuesday. It just depends on how fast this thing is moving. But it's almost a Cat 3. Expect this storm to be a Category 3 sometime in the next 12 hours by this evening. This is Typhoon Trammy over in the West Pacific. And I had somebody mention that typhoons or that storms in the Pacific were all typhoons. And that's not true. If you look at the map and you find what's called the Anti-Meridian, that's just west of Hawaii. It's an imaginary line that, that divides the Earth. If you go left of the Anti-Meridian, all storms over there like this one you see are classified as typhoons. Anything in the Pacific right of the Anti-Meridian is still considered a hurricane. So not all storms in the Pacific are necessarily typhoons. Have to be left of the anti-meridian and you can look that up on google earth click on google earth go to view and then click on grid in fact let me show you real quick here's google earth go up to view click on grid go over here to this line here that's the anti-meridian 
Anything left of the anti-meridian, like the storm here? Typhoon. Anything right of the anti-meridian, like this storm here? Still a hurricane. And this storm over here in the uh, West Pacific, I wanted to look at the eye wall real quick. This typhoon, and it's not even a super typhoon, but it's huge. This eye wall, we can actually measure it on Google Earth, is nearly 90 miles wide. Check this out. Let me go to miles real quick. 81 miles, and it just depends on which part of the eye wall that uh, you use for a reference. Now there it's over 100, from there to there, 105. That is huge, absolutely huge eye wall. And it's going to go past Okinawa, and this is the area where it's supposed to produce nearly 60-foot waves offshore, 50-foot waves along the shore here of Nichinan, right in through here this inlet could see tremendous storm surge and that would be on sunday uh, october 30th 2018. so big heads up guys especially over in the west pacific this storm here could produce some probably uh 60 foot waves in some cases there are small islands out there that could encounter 60 foot waves at least 49 foot along the southeastern shores so big storm producing big waves and we've got Rosa increasing in strength as I do this video. Thanks for watching guys. Have a super day and be safe out there.